Shalom Havarim, James Trim here, and today we're going to talk about uh, Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 through 15, the seed of the woman and the virgin birth. Uh, <clears throat> this will probably be my the last of my uh, uh, videos at this time anyway on the uh, virgin birth, and we'll move on to other subjects. Um, I may revisit it at some point, but... Uh, this is uh, uh, this is really kind of uh, uh, the last little item, and this is a series of videos that started when we did a video on the uh, difference between the Nazarenes and the Ebionites, and that raised discussions about the virgin birth, and so this is the fourth video we've done on the subject of the virgin birth. Um, before we get started, I need to ask everybody to please donate to support these videos. You can do that by clicking on the donate link in the video description. You can send donations by PayPal to donations at WNAE.org. Uh, or, as I said, you can click on the donut link. Donut link. It'd be great if there was a donut link, right? There's a donate link in the uh, video description and if you click on that link there's other ways to donate as well through zelle or gofundme as well as paypal so people have been asking for other ways to donate if they don't do paypal now there's uh, uh, ways you can donate with zelle and with gofundme all right uh let's see i need to ask everybody to please donate I already did that. I need to ask everybody to please like this video um, and like our videos in general. We have a huge like to view ratio, which is very good. So we need to get uh, keep that up and uh, the, also subscribe to this video. Click the notification bell so you get notifications when new videos come out. Um, I also need to ask everybody to uh, participate in the comments and let us know what you think in the comment section and participate in the discussions it is in those discussions i oftentimes will go in and participate myself and answer questions also they sometimes spawn new videos we did a, like i said a video on the ebionites and that led from questions to a series of videos dealing with the virgin birth uh, so uh, uh, please participate in that all of that helps the youtube uh, algorithm decide which videos to recommend to new viewers and we want to get recommended to new viewers all right so uh, uh, help us out with that as well also share these videos with your friends uh, in social media uh, facebook twitter uh, in facebook groups etc all these things again help us get the message out all right, so as often the case, we have handouts for this video, and you can find the handouts by going to the video description and clicking on the PDF file of the handouts, and that will uh, uh, allow you to either print them out or view them on another screen and uh, follow along with some of the extra biblical quotations, for example, that you may not have handy. <clears throat> So uh, we're talking about Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 through 15, and I'm going to read my translation of that from the Hebraic Roots Version, verses 14 and 15. And Yahweh Elohim said unto the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you from among all cattle and from among all the beasts of the field. Upon your belly shall you go, and dust shall you eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. They shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise her their heel. Uh, this is Genesis 3, 14 through 15. So we immediately recognize in this Torah passage something that's very odd here. Uh, uh, Chava, is be Eve, is being addressed. Uh, or being referenced between you and the woman. Sorry, she, she's being referenced. And it says, um, uh, I will put enmity between you and the woman, Chava, and between your seed and her seed. Uh, this is something very unusual because the ancients did not even believe or did not understand a woman's contribution to the reproductive process. They didn't know that she had egg cells and that the male had 
sperm cells and that the two uh, uh, were both required for reproduction. They thought the woman was more like a, um, a furrow in the ground and that a seed was planted in the furrow and uh, from that seed that was planted in the furrow, the plant would grow. And in like manner, they believed that a male implanted seed in the woman and she, like the ground, was a medium for that seed to grow. And so the idea of a woman, uh, a seed was all seed was always um, associated with a male. It was something produced by a male. The male's per, uh, contribution uh, to the reproductive process. Okay, so when we read this uh, reference to a woman's seed between your seed and her seed. They and they shall bruise your head and you shall bruise their heel. It's very odd that um, uh, that we're reading reference to a woman's seed. Um, and I believe the implication that is uh, being passed to us here is that this uh, uh, speaks of the Messiah, first of all. And the idea that it's a Messianic prophecy is something that we're going to deal with okay in this video and that it is indicating that this messianic uh, prophecy this messiah would be the seed of a woman in, in, in other words a woman and only a woman would be contributing to his um, reproduction uh, at least in an earthly manner a virgin birth in other words and so uh, this is the uh, first prophecy of the Messiah uh, directly in, in any kind of, uh, uh, I would say, remez, if not Peshat way in the Torah, chronologically speaking. And um, uh, it's a prophecy effectively of the virgin birth of the Messiah. So now let's talk about the fact that this is a Messianic prophecy. Um, so let's look at this prophecy uh, or this passage in the Targums. Um, so our next hand, page of our handout is titled Genesis 3, 14, and it's really 14 through 15 in the Targums. And the first passage here is from Targum Pseudo-Jonathan. And that we say Targum Pseudo-Jonathan because there is a Targum Jonathan to the Torah. And there's a Targum Jonathan to the Navaim, to the prophets. The official Targum of the Prophets is Targum Jonathan, but the official Targum of the Torah is Targum Onkelos. Uh, but there is a Targum Jonathan to the Torah, but it is regarded as tar Targum Pseudo-Jonathan. Jonathan, Jonathan uh, didn't actually write it, uh, whereas um, and that's at least an academic view. But at any rate, Targum Jonathan to the Torah as opposed to Targum Unclos to the Torah. And in Targum Jonathan to the Torah, which academically is regarded as Pseudo-Jonathan, we read, And it shall be that when the sons of the woman study the Torah diligently and obey its injunctions, they will direct themselves to smite you on the head and slay you. But when the sons of the woman forsake the commandments of the Torah and do not obey its injunctions, you will direct yourself to bite them on the heel and afflict them. However, there will be a remedy for the sons of the woman, but for you, serpent, there will be no remedy. They shall make peace with one another in the end, in the very end of days, in the days of the King Messiah. So here we have this as a Messianic prophecy in Targum Jonathan to the Torah. A reference to King Messiah. And we likewise read in the Targum Yerushalayim to this passage, it shall be that when the sons of the woman study the Torah diligently and obey its injunctions, they will direct themselves to smite you on the head and slay you. 
But when the sons of the woman forsake the commandments of the Torah and do not obey its injunctions, you will direct yourself to bite them on the heel and afflict them. However, there will be a remedy for the sons of woman, but for you, serpent, there will be no remedy. They shall make peace with one another in the end, in the very end of days, in the days of King Messiah. Uh, virtually the same. Okay, virtually the same. Both of these targums interpret the seed of the woman as those who study Torah and obey it. However, in doing so, they make peace with one another, and these are described as the days of King Messiah. Thus, the targums identify Torah observant Israel with the Messiah in this passage as the seed of the woman. Because Torah observant Israel is the body of Messiah. Let's turn to our next page, Genesis 3, 14, in the Midrash Rabbah. So the Midrash Rabbah makes this identification of the seed of the woman as the Messiah in its comment to Genesis 23, 5, uh, which is referring back to the naming of Seth in the comment. So it's commenting on Genesis 23, 5, but in the comments to Genesis, it's a little complicated here, in the comment to Genesis 23, 5, it's commenting about Genesis 4:15, uh, Genesis chapter 4, and the naming of Seth, but by extension, it's also therefore, uh, as you'll see, alluding to Genesis 3:15. <clears throat> so this is what the Midrash Rabbah says, and she called his name Seth, for God has appointed me another seed. Uh, Rabbi Tehuma said in the, rab in the name of Shmu uh, Shmuel Kozit, she hinted at that seed which would arise from another source, i.e. King Messiah. So there can be little doubt that the seed which would arise from another source here is referencing to the, the seed of Chava, uh, mentioned in Genesis 3.15, the seed of woman, which is identified here as the Messiah. So we see from the Torah itself that the Messiah would not have a human father, but would instead be the seed of a woman that is, have a virgin birth. So um, this was a short video, so I will do, I do we'll, we'll go back and summarize what we've learned about the virgin birth over these last four videos. Um, going back five videos, really, we learned that the Ebionites didn't believe in the virgin birth but the Nazarenes, the original Jewish followers of Yeshua, did believe in the virgin birth, that the Ebionites apostatized from the Nazarenes and split off from them in 70 CE, and they rejected the virgin birth. This is one of the key differences and different, demonstrates to us that Nazarenes and Ebionites were two different groups, and Nazarenes were the original Jewish followers of Yeshua that did, in fact, accept the virgin birth. Uh, we learned that in the Ebionites video. Then we did a video uh, about um, uh, the virgin birth and the allegation that circulates on the internet particularly that there are six pagan gods that had, uh, or uh, pagan deities, alleged deities, that had uh, allegedly had virgin births as well. And there's a meme that circulates around on the internet with these uh, six pagan deities alleging they had virgin births just like Yeshua. But in fact, when we scrutinize and closely examine uh, these uh, pagan deities and the mythologies around them, we find out that it's not true. They didn't have virgin births. In fact, one of them, Krishna, was the seventh of seven children born to his mother. She was not only not a virgin, she'd had seven children before him. Um, the, uh, uh, the only one that had anything close to a, a really what we call a virgin birth was born through a sort of a form of artificial insemination. And that mythology and that tradition of, in that pagan uh, mythology didn't arise until after the time Yeshua was born. So if anything, it was implanted back upon or engrafted back upon uh, the pagan deity from Yeshua and not vice versa. So the idea that the idea of a virgin birth is of pagan origin uh, is simply not true. Uh, it, it just doesn't doesn't hold water. 
Then we uh, examined uh, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. I won't uh, go into too much detail here. You can go back and watch the video we did on that, but we demonstrated that Isaiah 7, 14 does in fact uh, demonstrate uh, a prophecy, produce, pre present us with a prophecy of virgin birth of the Messiah. And then we saw on a sowed level in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 through 7, there we had on the sowed level a prophecy that, um, or a tradition preserved that tied that prophecy to Isaiah 7, 14 and, and uh, 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 preserved for us a tradition that the Messiah would be born to a closed womb. Uh, as opposed to an open womb. In other words, a miraculous birth, i.e. the virgin birth of Isaiah 7 14. And in today's passage, Genesis 3 verses 14 through 15 in the Torah, we learn that the Messiah would be born, uh, that this is a Messianic prophecy in the rabbinic literature, and that the Messiah would in fact be born to a, uh, of the seed of a woman, uh, which is a very unusual phrase. Uh, implying to us on a Ramez level that the Messiah wouldn't be the seed of a man, but the seed of a woman, that is, be born to a woman without uh, a human male's involvement in his generation. All right, um, all right, one more time, I just want to encourage everybody to please donate to support these videos. Donations have been very low in July, and the rent will be coming due soon, and we don't have it. So please donate to support this work. You can do that by clicking on the donate link. You can do it by sending donations by PayPal to donations at WNAE.org. Or you can do it by clicking on the donate link. There are new ways to donate there. You can now donate not only by PayPal, but by Zelle or uh, the, uh, our GoFundMe account. Um, and you can, uh, uh, in relation to my wife's health issues. Uh, so you can do that, or uh, um, as I said, you can uh, just send donations by PayPal to donations at WNAE.org. Uh, also, please like this video, uh, subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell uh, so you get notifications of new videos. Let us know what you think in the comments. Participate in the discussions in the comments. Uh, share our videos on social media uh, with your friends. And uh, until next time, shalom everybody.